me started my own podcast. And I'm not going to say the name of it here because I don't want this to be a plug. But it's listening to shows like the Higher Side Chats and Freeman and Red Ice Radio that have inspired me to speak out in this way. So thank you. You know, it's been a, also a long time item on my bucket list to actually sit down with you and have a higher side chat, if you know what I mean. But before I go, I have to tell you, and this is what prompted me to leave this message today. Uh, I've taken some other inspiration from you, from one of your conspiracies, and I quit my job this morning, and it feels awesome, and it's going to work. Peace. Masters almost surely have a plan This clearly may be something there beyond the realm of man And until you thoroughly tested every last close just view I find the more you think you know, the less you really do That's true, Dr. Zayas Very well Where would we be without THC? How's it going, Higher Side Chatters? Drinking a little drink, smoking a little smoke, and thoroughly altering my consciousness for the journey ahead? Is it necessary today? Not really, but a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. From sunny San Diego, I'm Greg Carlwood, and folks, we all know that many of our politicians are nothing more than psychopathic steeds. We find archons riding right into the New World Order, slimy energy suckers still receiving standing ovations. I don't get it. So today the plan was to narrow the focus solely on the dirty laundry of the Clinton power duo because while it's obvious that anyone is entrenched in the political system as the Clintons will have a closet full of skeletons, how much do we actually know about the crime, schemes, scandals, illegal campaign finances, and the dozens of bodies that apparently lie in their wake? What do we actually have to say to those out-of-it parents that still tow the Democratic Party line? You know they're out there. And for a lot of us, we probably haven't looked at the details in a while, if at all. So that was the goal today, and I got Stephen Kelly to be the man of honor as he's been bullet pointing the long list of unsavoriness surrounding the Clintons on his show for a long time. And when we stick to the Clintons, I think Stephen is on point. I can't say I'm in as equal agreement with all of his off-topic analysis, but we all build our own reality from the bits and pieces that make sense for us. So take what resonates with you and cut around the rest. It's what we do as intelligent adults. But I do think Stephen stacks up quite a bit of concerning information, and I'm happy to present his perspective and research with you. I did want to say there was a money bomb winner, but Mr. Butner, you got some email that needs checking. 297 bucks going out to him, because that's how we do it around here. And we have another great new Lauren Silva song at the end of this THC sandwich, but let's get into the meat first. And that is my Clinton-centric conversation with Stephen D. Kelly. And to play us in is some new bumper music sent in by a listener known as Syntholab, and I'll see you on the other side. Enjoy. Evening, you higher side chatters. Give ear unto Carwood over John B. or Nuri. And listen all to THC. Drinking a little drink, smoking a little smoke. Knowing all history's a joke From Titanic and Apollo To Dollar Sun Hollow So Saturn secrets around From chemistry to policy Or quantum biology Don't forget the moon's splendor It's tip of the heart And Delano's fireside chat. All right, guys, in the land of the free, complete with democratic elections and over 300 million people, the idea of political dynasties should just be a relic for the history books. Yet we still see the same names and faces, the same false choices, the same idiotic bumper stickers. Well, today we're going to put the focus solely on one of these families, and that is the Clintons. Sure, the Clinton power couple is only a party of two, but between Bill being governor of Arkansas for over a decade and president for nearly another, and Hillary being an eight-year senator and then secretary of state, their influence is undeniable, and the fact that, as a country, we're even entertaining the thought of more is pretty ludicrous. 
especially when you consider the staggering number of deaths, crimes, and shady dealings that seem to surround the gruesome twosome, and that is what today's guest is here to talk about. His name is Stephen D. Kelly, an ex-CIA contractor, author, and host of The Stephen D. Kelly Show, a powerful platform for alternative media on Revolution Radio, and a hell of a host himself, Stephen. Welcome to THC. How you doing? Can't complain, man. I'm happy to be doing this. Thanks for being here. Uh, I wanted to do a few shows focusing specifically on some of the reoccurring families, and if Jeb Bush had more of a chance in the election, I might have started with them. But, you know, nobody's surprised by the Bush family crimes, and I still hear people constantly saying how good the Clinton years were, how good the economy was, and I think we should offer some counterpoints for people who are just sick of hearing that. And on your show, you did a great episode going over the Clintons and the long list of deaths that have occurred in their inner circle over the years. I've seen some lists that go up to, like, 90, but... In regards to how they ran Arkansas, you also refer to them as a hillbilly mafia, which I love. But Mm -hmm. introduce us to the Clintons as you see them. Well, you know, sure, they are certainly uh, rednecks and all that. But you also have to remember that Bill is a Rhodes Scholar. So he was he was chosen by the uh, the internationalists some time ago. Rhodes Scholars, of course, uh, that's that's the big scholarship that was set up by Cecil Rhodes from South Africa, which, of course, is a big uh, instigator of the New World Order. And uh, that's sh- that should tell you quite a bit. But but, yeah, there really is no demographic as far as different parties are concerned. It's it's all the same thing They They all they all work together. Mm-hmm. People, you've seen these pictures of Donald Trump and the Clintons chatting it up uh, like good old buddies. And, and that's, that really is the way it is. Uh, the actual party really does mean nothing. Right. But no, these guys, uh, you know, obviously we've, we've seen some pretty criminal behavior, but these, these people are, are some of the most criminal criminals that we've seen in there. Of course, George Bush is certainly responsible for killing millions of George Bush, uh, both of them actually, but, mm-hmm. But uh, but these guys, they're just down and dirty and crude. And there, there's just no limit to how many people have died as a result of their exploits, you know, just from their the the uh, witnesses to the goings ons with Mena, Arkansas, uh, to Waco, to to you name it. But but I think uh, one of the biggest, uh, most important murders that was uh, attributed to the Clintons of course, is directly attributed to Hillary Clinton and her her desire to become a senator of New York. <clears throat> and that, of course, would be the uh, the killing of John F. Kennedy Jr. Mm. And, you know, a lot of people would like to suggest that he was just a rotten pilot and whatnot. But, but no, if you look at the Clinton body count, you'll see there's a long list of people that have died in small planes that have been messed with or or modified in such a way to allow this to happen at a at, uh, time of their choosing. But the big thing about uh, JFK Jr. is that when Bill Clinton was in the White House, the energy secretary, of course, was Bill Richardson. And the Department of Energy is responsible for all of the Star Wars facilities, such as the uh, on Long Island, they have a huge particle accelerator called uh, the Brookhaven National Laboratory, I believe. And this is actually, this takes up about a good half of Long Island. It's it's huge. It's kind of like CERN. But uh, just to the north of that is, is Camp Hero, where Montauk Base is located. This is a top secret facility, and this is East Coast Star Wars. And they have a uh, some very advanced weapon systems over there uh, that they've used you know, in quite spectacular fashion, they used it to shoot down Flight 800. They shot down Flight 990, and they also used it to take out John F. Uh, JFK Jr. So when Hillary Clinton wanted to become senator and, and Bill was in office, she was able to basically put pressure on Bill Richardson to activate their Star Wars device and take out her adversary. Mm-hmm. So, so that's that's pretty incredible that resources like that would be used to further the political career of uh, one criminal like that. Right. There are a lot of bodies on the way to the top of the Clinton empire. But before we go through some uh, more of the death list, let's talk about just a few of the areas of corruption. And maybe you can tell us how bad it's been with the Clinton clan. Like, uh, 
What can you tell us about the drug running in Arkansas when Bill was governor? Okay, well, first of all, the drug running, uh, drug slash gun running, is is a major part of the American foreign policy for a long time. It, it always has been. So this is uh, this is certainly something that he didn't that didn't start with him. And the Kennedy, I wouldn't really start say it started with Kennedy or blame it on on any kind of a Kennedy administration. But from a CIA standpoint, we know that this has been going on at least since the Kennedy administration with the Bay of Pigs. So you have to understand is that the CIA, of course, and the the uh, uh, the black budgets have been funded by by uh, drug sales, and of course the uh, f- the policy of uh, trying to weaken minorities and and uh, have an effect on on uh, certain demographics of the country. That's been their plan, and this is why they've been using these drugs for that purpose for a long time. However, the point is is that it's always been going on, and the drugs, of course, are, are a major part of that. But but the dr- the guns going in the other direction are are a very very major part of that because they are uh, what is used to foment revolution and and what have you in these various different countries. Right. So the main of Arkansas, of course, was was very very uh, big transshipment point for guns going into South America. And, and cocaine coming back into the United States. Like I talked about that on my show quite a bit, and I had Tosh Plumley on, who was actually a pilot who actually flew back and forth. I don't know if you ever had a chance to talk to Tosh. No. But uh, he he actually was the pilot who, who did a lot of these runs, and he's actually claimed to have personally delivered cocaine to Clinton at Mena, Arkansas. <laughs> and he's still alive today. <laughs> so uh, you can't really dispute that. Mm-hmm. But uh, obviously, a lot of people died as a result of that. Uh, people like, for instance, of course, there's the, the story about the two young boys that were uh, bodies were found on a train track. And of course, it's alleged that they somehow became witnesses to all this. And then, of course, those deaths led to a whole string of deaths to cover it up afterwards. Everybody that had information got picked off one after the other. And then probably the most visible fiasco that came out of the whole main Arkansas conspiracy was the uh, the Waco incident, mm-hmm. you know, with the Branch Davidians and all that, because it was alleged that uh, David Koresh was somehow involved in all that, and he had information regarding the uh, transshipments of drugs and weapons through Mena, which apparently wasn't too far from from, uh, from Waco, apparently. Mm. So you think that was the the catalyst for Waco? Uh, yeah, that certainly was a big part of it. I don't think it had anything to do with him allegedly molesting children like they tried to suggest, especially when you consider that our whole government and most of the world government is based on pedophilia. I certainly sure. don't think that's what the real issue was. But yeah, I, I think that that was, that was one of the reasons why they had to burn the thing down and destroy all the evidence. You know, it's a scorched earth. And if you look at... Uh, so many instances, you know, where they've had to take out people for being witnesses. Just look at all the the uh, naval personnel and the the flyers in the Marine Corps and what have you. These these military personnel, whenever he's had an escort, almost on any kind of a, a foreign junket, the the entire escort ends up dead. Right. This is uh, happens over and over again. So you got to wonder what the hell it is that he's doing that causes his entire escort to have to be eliminated like that. Yeah, that was one of the most interesting parts to you reading through the death list is because there was just so many bodyguards. And, you know, when we're talking about something like the drug running and these two kids who were killed in the train deaths, I mean, Bill Clinton is kind of peripherally involved, but I mean, this is his security detail. And I don't know if you could find a lot of other politicians that have had the numbers go up into more than a dozen, definitely, of people that have died around him that are trained professionals, and they die in strange ways. I guess many of them happened while he was in Italy. Do you know anything more about that? Well, yeah, he was on an aircraft carrier, <clears throat> and they uh, they took a detail, and they went into town, I guess. They went, they went ashore. And of course, I, the biggest issue, of course, with Bill Clinton is that he he can't keep his pants on, <laughs> and that that's really what it's all about. You know, when you look at all of these other leaders and what have you, sure they've got their indiscretions and they've you know they're involved in satanic activities, but this guy was just 
out of control and it was it was always him chasing some woman everywhere he goes and you would think that you know that this is would be the sort of thing yeah sure if he's out screwing around and and acting like a an ogre is that really a reason for killing everybody i i don't know but apparently uh, you'd think that what i mean what's the answer is the answer that it, that our president should be allowed to to act like uh, perverts in public and then that way we don't have to kill off all the witnesses i <laughs> you know but but i'm thinking that the only reason why he's had so many of these uh, bodyguard details have to be eliminated is because of his sexual indiscretions whereas most of these other people obama you know he he's pretty much sticks to uh screwing screwing his boyfriend in the white house or various different uh, young men that he has in the white house he's not he's not traveling all over the world doing homosexual acts he he does it inside the white house so there's nobody nobody's having to be killed really oh yeah oh hmm. yeah you didn't know that huh um no yeah. i hear i hear some i hear some rumors about michelle but uh you know <laughs> I, I haven't gone too much down the the sexual deviancy of obama rabbit hole uh well you know there have been some secret service agents who have come out and said that uh when the doors close at night and everybody leaves. The first thing he does is he takes off his uh, suit and puts on a some Arabic dress and he starts entertaining men. That's pretty bad. Apparently, he has, from what I understand, he has uh, he has sex with men in the White House almost every night. Hmm. So it's uh, pretty bad. <laughs> All right. I mean, if you if you think that sort of thing is bad, I'm not going to suggest that it's homosexuality is bad. I'm just saying that uh, it's it's really bad when the president has to sneak around and and do these sort of things private like that. Yeah. So when it comes to to just to, to focus on the the dead bodyguards for a minute, there's another one that I thought was kind of interesting. A guy that he that actually ran a security detail company that he ended up owing quite a bit of money to. That guy went down too, didn't he? Yeah, well, that was in the early days of Arkansas. He was, uh, I don't remember, I don't have his name here in front of me, but he was one of his uh, closest confidants from from the earliest days. And certainly this guy was was pretty dirty himself. He was, uh, I'm not sure if he was ex-law enforcement or what, but everybody around, everybody knew him. And obviously, uh, you know, he was certainly somebody who would have been armed and had, had the ability to, to defend himself. But they, yeah, they got him too. And I think what it was that they drove him off the, they made him crash. That's one of their, their favorite methods is to uh, make you crash your car and then run you over on the side of the road afterwards or do a drive-by shooting on you. I'm pretty sure he had a, that's what happened to him. He got crashed and then they shot him, drove by and shot him, something like that. Yeah, I think this one, I, I do have a note. His name is Jerry Parks. And I think this one, he was gunned down in his car at an intersection. But you're right. That does happen a whole lot that people's cars seem to just accelerate into something. Clearly some kind of manipulation. Right. Yeah. Just like the small planes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you talked about Paul Walker. We know that he died in a similar fashion with his car. I guess they say he was speeding this sports car down the street and crashed into a pole. But do you think there was foul play in that, given the, the type of death it was? Well, yeah. Paul Walker, Michael Hastings, there's so many others. But those guys, those two particular ones involving cars, <clears throat> most definitely they they were executed uh, the thing is, though, is there, there's always a little bit of confusion about what the actual method was. Like Paul Walker, there's a possibility that he could have actually uh, been a, taken out by a drone, by like a Hellfire missile or something fired from a drone. Hmm. Uh, the, of course, now these guys are driving newer cars, you know, like the, uh, for instance, the uh, Michael Hastings was driving a Mercedes and, and this, these, all these cars now are, they have the ability to be taken over and, and hacked. Right. Uh, hackers have done this. Uh, this is something that nobody talks about. But if if you have a a, a modern vehicle, especially a GM product with OnStar, something like that, your your vehicle could be hacked at any time. So that that's a problem. And <clears throat> so yeah, there's a very strong possibility that uh, the car was driven in high speed into a into an obstruction, or or it could have been hit by a missile or something of this nature. But but yeah, those those guys were definitely murdered. 
Oh, yeah, I definitely feel that way, at least about Michael Hastings. I mean, the guy was a journalist who told people close to him that he had something pretty explosive, and then, boom, he dies. Uh, but I did want to talk a little bit more about the sexual exploits of Bill Clinton, because like you said, a lot of crimes do start there. Of course, everybody knows about Monica Lewinsky, but she wasn't the only intern, and it went a lot further than just the interns at the White House. What have you found out? How deep does this go for Bill? Well, it's uh, actually... Right now, you know, currently there's quite a few of these women who are coming out and challenging Hillary. And it's not really so. I think everybody knows that, that Bill was was a sexual predator. But the real issue now is that that Hillary has been an enabler and has been basically rather than confronting him over this issue, she has been challenging and threatening the victims so, so many of them. I know Paula Jones has come out and said this, and there's quite a there's a, a few others who are very high profile who are doing the same thing right now, who have basically said that since the attack or the uh, whatever it was that Bill did to them, Hillary has been the one to be the most active in trying to shut them down mm. and th threaten them and, and this sort of thing. Wow. So, but yeah, that's that's certainly current events that's going on right now as we speak. Yeah, I get that, because she has a lot more to lose than even he does at this point, because she is still so hungry to be president, which is weird in itself, because you'd think people who are attached to so much shady behavior and crimes and even these deaths, you'd think they just want to take that money and get out while the getting's good and drift away from the spotlight, but <laughs> she's still running. Well, you have to you have to really look at the big picture here, and the big picture, of course, is that uh, the world is being run by Satanists, and most of this is, is based out of Israel and, and, of course, Rothschild money. They are very, very actively trying to set up a situation to cause the death of uh, six and a half billion people. And they're in a very, very, very exclusive club. And this club wants to be able to go underground and retire in a uh, subterranean palace mm -hmm. and this is really what it's all going on what's really going on is because these people <clears throat> they're they're bending over backwards doing everything they can to please their masters uh so that they can earn their spot in in these uh these golden bunkers if you will hmm. but so that's what's really going on right yeah I've, I've definitely heard that thread too but back to to what we were talking about there are a lot of rumors about not only Hillary suppressing Bill's victims, but apparently she's a bit of a sexual predator herself, right? Well, you know, again, uh, nothing wrong with being a lesbian, but she is a, the poster child for closet lesbians, I guess, out there. And there's so many photos of her where she just can't, standing next to some attractive young lady, and you look at her face, and she's just in, in straining not to stare at the girl's boobs or something. It's just really incredible. But yeah, hmm. she's uh, she's pretty bad about that. I see. Well, yeah, man, of course, I have no issues at all with homosexuality. I shouldn't even have to say that. But the concern is more that in these cases that you had talked about, it seems like these advances are against a person's will. And not only that, but it's usually the youth being preyed upon. So yeah, when politicians are getting these rent boys, I don't care that they're boys. I care that they're 14, 15 year old kids being sold for sex. And we did have Bill's name thrown around in that Jerry Epstein scandal, too. Well, let's let's just discuss this for a little bit here. OK, now, again, I have lots of friends who are, you know, gay, have alternative lifestyles and, and are not don't live a heterosexual lifestyle. However, we have to look at the the common denominator in the bottom line here, and and I say this very often because as we move forward, it's getting to the point now where you you have to address this and you can't ignore it, and that is the satanic nature of everything that's going on here. These people, uh, if if you don't believe in Satan, that's okay, but they do very much, and this is everything that they do is is focused in that direction, and it doesn't matter which one of them you take. Obama is a perfect example. His whole his course that he taught at Columbia, allegedly taught at Columbia, was based on a book that was dedicated to Satan. I mean, to Lucifer. So it's like this is this is very in your face. The whole child molestation and sexual deviation nonsense 
again, without judging, I mean, obviously I have no problem judging pedophiles, but it's it's pervasive in every bit of this stuff. And it's almost like you cannot be part of this without without doing that. You look at you look at the British government. I mean, my God, it's almost completely pedophile. And uh, and if you look at what's going on in this country, obviously there is an agenda, and and there isn't in this agenda. It's a dark agenda. And if you want to look at this as uh, gay rights, women's rights, what have you, it's it's really not what that is. It's corrosive. It's destructive, and it's meant to be corrosive and destructive. And that that is that satanic thing. And if you want to take it one step further, you could you could suggest that this is a Zionist conspiracy, and it actually is. Mm-hmm. And it's just there's just no two ways about it. And if you look at what's going on with the uh, the Obama administration, I mean, just you know, which of course is just a continuation. The uh, uh, yes, Michelle of, is certainly would appear to be transgender, a, a man disguised as a, a woman, and and Barack Obama is obviously clearly. A homosexual pretending to be uh, married to a woman, and with actuality is is uh, shacking up with a guy with two children who are probably adopted. And th- this is uh, again, you know, it's not the end of the world. But the point is, is they're using that to drive their policy and trying to use that to uh, promote uh, all sorts of other bizarre gender choices. It's nonsense. And then if you look at, it's so pervasive and it's so huge. Even the water that we drink in this country, people talk about fluoride, but nobody talks about the chlorine that they use to purify the water. Why did they choose chlorine to purify the water as opposed to peroxide, which is much safer and is cheaper and does a much better job of purifying water? They used chlorine in the water because chlorine turns your cholesterol into plaque. And cholesterol is made from testosterone, hmm. or I should say testosterone is made from cholesterol. Anyway, the point is, is that they're trying to pussify the United States. They're trying to turn the men into girly boys, <laughs> and they're, you know, they're trying to, uh, uh, you know, obviously look at they're, they're doing the same thing with the women. You know, we've got uh, we've got gender bending chemicals in in all of our foods. Our foods are being packaged in plastic, which has uh, phenols that are that are also hormone disruptors. So, yeah, there's a major effort going in this country uh, to to screw the men, mm-hmm. to to, de- to demasculate the men, and to uh, defeminize the women. And you know, people may say this is a uh, a modern human thing. No, it's not. It's it's not modern. It's it's genetic and chemical manipulation and it's uh being done for destructive purposes. Hmm. So this is there's nothing advanced about this at all. This is strictly done to destroy our country from the inside. Yeah. And uh you mentioned the Obama kids being possibly adopted and I think that's interesting. Also there is something to bring it back to the Clintons about uh Chelsea might not be Bill's daughter either. No, well, Chelsea. I don't think there's any doubt that um, that Hillary was screwing Webster Hubble when she was working at the Rose Law Firm, and that's what produced uh, Chelsea. Hmm. So, yeah, and if you look at Chelsea, she certainly looks like Webster Hubble. She doesn't look like Bill. Huh. She looks a lot like Web Hubble. And uh, also with uh, with Bill on the subject of illegitimate kids, there was one woman, I didn't grab the name, but you listed her off in the death list being suicided with a shotgun to the back of the head, seven months pregnant, and apparently she had been telling people that it was Bill's kid. Yeah, well, you can bet you Hillary was probably involved in that one too. Huh? <laughs> and with his interns, there was a rumor, apparently the story goes that a rumor had gotten out in the White House that some intern with the initial M was going to be speaking out. And there just so happened to be several women that he had abused sexually in the white house with the initial M and they just, they started wiping him off, but they didn't get to Monica Lewinsky, unfortunately in time for them. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they were looking for the, uh, they were going with the ones with the M in their last name and not their first name. Right. They, they took out a Mahoney. They got Mahoney. <laughs> yeah. That was a really a weird one. Um, she was the one who I think Starbucks, I think it was. Right? Yeah, she managed a Starbucks and somebody came in and shot her and two other people. And they said it was a robbery, yet no money was taken. Yeah, not only was no money taken, but they they 
made a point of putting most of the bullets into her head. <laughs> so, right, yeah. yeah. They picked on her. There was another one, Christine Marzan. Uh, I guess she was beaten with some blunt object outside of her school, but she was also an intern in, in the same window of wiping people out with this rumor coming out. Monica must not have used their first name or something. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, maybe that's why they, they missed her. But, I mean, just what we've covered alone is so many deaths attached peripherally to these two and really in just a couple of subjects, dead bodyguards, dead women that had been uh, preyed upon. Uh, Another big section of people that had died were related to his fundraising. A lot of the illegal campaign contributions and foreign sources of money, apparently they had taken up to about a half a billion by some people's estimates. And a lot of these people who had clues and information on how they were getting their money, they went missing or died mysteriously also, right? Well, yeah. Um, let's see. One of the more famous ones, I think, uh, was the uh, Lum. Uh, he was taking he was taking um, donations from uh, China, and uh, <clears throat> had some had some uh, dirty sources that were helping to funnel that money. And uh, I don't remember all the details about that, but uh, but I, I I should mention though, you know, not connected to the fundraising though, but one of the things that that I was really kind of close to back when that was happening was the uh, uh the chinese military uh it was was um, actively bringing in the uh AK47s into the united states and the SKSs and all that and uh this was Norinco of course which which is a branch of the chinese military <clears throat> and um i had a meeting with uh well it was uh, it was with the ch- some chinese diplomats i actually wrote about it in my book but uh they came here ostensibly for a some sort of a trade mission involving some Hollywood celebrities. <clears throat> but the reality was that they were here to facilitate this transfer of these weapons uh, uh, for, for the Clintons, you know, mm-hmm. and again, this, this was back in the, during the same time when Gary Webb was writing about the, uh, uh, the CIA flooding the gangs, uh, the LA gangs with AK 47s and cocaine. Hmm. So, <laughs> Lots of fun. <laughs> Lots of fun. Another one I thought was interesting related to the Oklahoma City bombing, uh, Alan G. Wicker. That's interesting because I guess a lot of people that worked at his level got a mysterious page not to go to work that day, something we also saw in 9-11. But Alan didn't get that page. I think they were at, they were mad at him for something, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what, what was he was the only one that didn't get the page. <laughs> Where is everybody <laughs> Well, that that is another interesting bit of information because with a lot of these deaths that you've listed, there are times where they take out a full plane, not just a, a small passenger plane or a private jet, but they take out a whole plane of people just to get to one person. They really don't care how many other bodies lie in the wake, do they? Uh, that's happened so many times. Flight 007 that was shot down over Sakhalin Island, that was to get one congressman that was on board. Obviously, that helicopter that Ron Brown was on, you know, I don't know how many people were on that thing, but they they sh- they took that down just to get to Ron Brown. Of course, he survived the crash, and then they had to come and kill him after he was already on the ground, hmm. you know. <laughs> Gosh. Something else you mentioned in that show. Talk to us about the reoccurring plane fuel gauge trick. This seems to happen several times in, in some of these deaths. Yeah, well, that, again, that's the... Uh, that's one of those funky little tricks that they do on these anybody flying a small airplane. Uh, again, whether or not this is uh, something that's been modified or something that is uh, able is always built into all these planes, I suspect that every vehicle has some sort of a uh, kill switch or some sort of a method to be uh, manipulated, built into it. The same way as the GM products can can be uh, manipulated via OnStar. I think the planes certainly, you know, if you've got a radio hookup to a plane, there's there's probably a good chance that they can screw with you. I mean, it's the same thing with even if you know, whether or not any planes are used on 9-11. We know that all of these Boeing, all the Boeing aircraft now are have fly-by-wire capability. And, you know, how many times have we have uh, – we had situations where, I mean, we had to speculate on whether or not that's something to do with it. Like flight MH-117, I believe, or the Malaysia one, or the, even the one that went down in Kiev, 
or was shot down by Kiev. Mm-hmm. There's there's questions about all of those planes and whether or not they were directed or changed their paths or the controls were basically taken over by uh, somebody outside of the plane. So we certainly have to be uh, thinking about that. But, you know, this is one of the reasons why I believe some of these other countries, uh, Russia and, and Europe, they don't want to have anything to do with Boeing because, you know, they, they know better than to uh, put their people on planes that the United States can, can control remotely. Mm. Man, you know, we know the Bushes are heavily involved in Skull and Bones, and you mentioned that Bill was a Rhodes Scholar, but are there any other connections to secret orders that would have brought Bill up in the old days? Uh, Bill, well, it's, you know, it's hard to say. These, I don't know where, uh, how they choose these people, if it's some sort of a bloodline thing or what, and what, what, you know, to be honest with you, I'm, you know, I'm not a historian as far as Bill Clinton is concerned, so I can't really think of, uh, anything that he would have done other than have been chosen as a Rhodes Scholar to put him in this position. Right. But there, there's probably, I'll say this, research has been done to show that all of these people are related in one way or another. You know, we've seen it uh, indirectly. Bill Clinton is, has a relationship to the Queen. There's, there's uh, blood connections to the royal family. Right. And I think they said that with the exception of maybe one president, that they've all been related uh, to some degree. Even Barack Obama somehow is related to Bush and and people like this. So, yeah, so I would say that uh, aside from any kind of a uh, uh, professional training or or selection process, that there's certainly some sort of a genetic lineage uh, legacy thing going on there. Yeah, there's always some type of connection. And to go into a few more scandals, of course, Whitewater is one that everybody has heard of, but I don't think people really understand what the Clintons did wrong in that thing. I know it was some type of real estate Ponzi scheme, but what can you tell us about that situation? Well, basically, you know, without, again, without having done my homework and reviewed, I, I could just uh, off the top of my head tell you that a lot of times with these situations, what they do Remember, they had they controlled Madison Guarantee. They had a bank that they controlled. They could take worthless property and uh, pump it up and and make it look like it was worth something quite a bit more than it was. And and uh, basically, the bank would uh, would drop the paperwork to suggest that there's going to be some big development going on. You know, I mean, essentially, it's like selling swampland. Mm-hmm. And, and inflating the price and selling it over and over. And, and this is what they did uh, very often. They, they, you know, they, they pulled that stunt over and over again. And you'll see that uh, so many of the people who were swindled had to enlist the help of investigators and whatnot to try to uh, find out, to try to get to the bottom of what happened or where the money went or, or what was going on. And, and those investigators end up getting killed. So uh, there, there's quite a few deaths associated with that. Hmm. And another scandal that I didn't even know anything about was this in-laws scandal. I learned about that from you, but apparently it was about putting back doors in software. Yeah, that's uh, actually pretty cool because the uh, the thing is about the in-laws scandal is that uh, when it happened, nobody really knew anything about what it was all about. And, you know, because the personal computer age hadn't really matured to the point it is now. So we we don't really understand. But uh, back in those days, they were working very hard to engineer uh, backdoors and Trojans and, and the sort of thing that, uh, you know, because of Edward Snowden, we know that is so pervasive in, in all of our communications technology. Even back then, when people were still somewhat ignorant, to uh, you know the uh, technology and what was coming in the future, these guys were actively working to install the same sort of backdoor listening devices and data stealing ability uh, that is so pervasive today. So yeah, but the thing is, is that like you said, that that scandal came and went, and people died, and no one really knows anything about it. And yet here we find out that what they were doing. It's so indicative of major issues that we're having to deal with today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is nothing new. This is they've been they've been doing this scandalous stuff for quite a while. Right. When Bill Clinton was president, 
he put a lot of things in motion. I mean, he also made the huge pushes towards globalization with the signing of the World Trade Organization Agreement, which is now creating policy that supersedes the laws of sovereign nations. I mean, this is New World Order stuff, but I hear it listed as one of his achievements all the time, like it's a good thing. He did a he did some really major things. One of the things he did was uh, he he put in some major protections in for the, uh, the the banks, the brokers, and insurance companies. And he basically said that only bankers can be banks, only brokers can be brokers, and only insurance companies can be insurance companies. And we always wondered what what was that all about? Because I thought, well, maybe he was trying to keep somebody like Bill Gates from going into the banking business, but. It was basically cementing control of those that that trifecta of evil, mm-hmm. and uh, some of the other things he did that are kind of significant, like for instance, uh, he very much empowered Israel to control the data, like a lot of what we have today. A lot of the, for instance, HIPAA. All of your medical data is protected by HIPAA, which is the Health Information Privacy Act. And it, the idea is to keep all of your medical data private and and secret. Only your doctors should be able to have access to that, and you should there should be no uh, distribution of this information. Well, Bill Clinton basically set into motion the system which which put all of that information into the hands of Israel, and most of the uh, uh, data collection that's going on by the NSA and what have you, your echelon and your uh, and all of that that listening stuff is also based out of Israel. So that's pretty incredible to to think that um, that the Israel has been put in charge of of the surveillance of of us, and it's not just of our medical data or our 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 personal communications. It's also all of our financial data mm-hmm. is is all being cleared through Israel. So uh, that's pretty pretty damn scary, if you ask me. Yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense, and. When it comes to the deaths and cover-ups, I also wanted to mention this James Bayer guy. Uh, he does the autopsies and apparently hides homicides behind a suicide ruling, which is also a reoccurring component, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Dr. Bayer, yeah. <clears throat> He's a famous uh, <clears throat> autopsy doctor who apparently is uh, the one that they call upon when, they, when they've got a dirty, a dirty body that they need to uh, <laughs> cover up. So yeah, his his name comes up quite a bit in some of these uh, shady shady murders. Another famous death apparently was Sandy Hume. People might know Brett Hume from Fox News. What happened there? That was his son, right? Uh, yeah, Sandy was Brett Hume's son. He was a, definitely an up and coming guy. Uh, and again, I don't remember the exact story, but I believe he was working on an expose. Or something uh, involving, uh, maybe you have the information in front of you. What it was involving, what if, one of the many Clinton scandals, and and yeah, he he got taken out. How yeah. how did they take him out? Did they run him over or what? Uh, well, it just says I wrote here that it was deemed a suicide, and it was basically a media blackout. The police were giving no information. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, there's just so darn many of these things, and <laughs> it's it's really hard to. Uh, keep track of them all but uh let's say for instance just to bring it up into the future here benghazi Mm -hmm. clearly benghazi now everybody knows that uh hillary clinton certainly was uh, responsible for this and obviously obama was was directly responsible also but the whole purpose of that uh, the um ambassador stevens was definitely involved in the transshipment of the stolen weapons from the army of of Muammar Gaddafi to ISIS in Turkey so that they could ship them into Syria. And for whatever reason, something didn't work out, and the personnel that were there to protect the ambassador didn't go along with the program. But the whole purpose of that event was to facilitate this transfer of uh, missile launchers and, and all sorts of sophisticated weaponry. And uh, of course, they did not want anything to come in there and and interfere with their with their trans their illegal transfer of weapons. So this is why they told the military to stand down and allow the embassy to get ransacked. And it wasn't really an embassy; it was more like a CIA uh, weapons shipment location. But but that's incredibly dirty. And and the thing is, is that uh, the United States is completely responsible for ISIS. 
And if we had to bring this into the, the, the future right now, this is truly the biggest deal, the biggest thing that's going on. I mean, look at what's what's happening. We've got World War III is on our doorstep. Russia has actually had to step in and take over this this fight against these uh, these bastards, and it's it's getting really ugly. And the whole world knows now that uh, ISIS is is purely a fabrication of the CIA and Mossad and some of these, uh, well, shall I say, uh, Israeli uh, Rothschild elements. You know, it's it's purely purely was created just for that for the for in order for them to uh, destroy as much of the Middle East as possible, so they could facilitate the creation of the Greater Israel. That that's all it is, and uh, and for for the the people in this country to have fear of ISIS and to to beg the uh, to allow our freedoms to be taken away and. And to to listen to anything that's coming out of these people, I mean, it's just the lies are just so bad right now. The whole world, we we look incredibly stupid to the entire world. And it's really sad because there's about 200 million Americans out of 350 Americans, 350 million Americans or so, there's about 200 million of them that are really, really dumb. Mm -hmm. And they still watch TV and they believe the crap they see on Fox News and CNN and everything else. And it's absolute lies, everything. So if you're still watching TV, you really have a problem. You've got to turn it off. You've got to stop using that thing because not only is the crap coming out of it just absolute lies and propaganda designed to make you stupid, they're also using special digital programming and sound programming to screw with your brain. Mm. I mean, it's it's like your TV and all TV programming is designed to make you sick and to turn you into a monster. Mm. It really is. I mean, seriously, that's exactly what it does. I don't know if you you know you pay attention to it, but there's there's certain notes like a musical note that they can actually remove, and they remove D the the note D. Uh, from from all of your TV broadcasts, and what it does is it causes you to lose empathy. It turns you into a monster, essentially. Really? So that yeah, that's exactly what they do. So in other words, they they you stare at the stupid TV. They program you to become this person that doesn't care about anything. Certainly doesn't care about other humans. And then they pump you full of all this crap, and they make you want to kill. It's the same thing with video games. People think video games, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's just a game and all that. But no, it's not. They actually are using these things to program people to become monsters. Mm, yeah, I've heard about the TV being broadcast at a certain frequency that facilitates certain wavelengths in the brain that induce a hypnotic state. That's been around for a while. <clears throat> well, they can they can modulate the light coming out. So the actual image that you're watching can be uh, modulated in such a way to program you. So, so yeah, they can they can blink the image at you at a specific uh, frequency or or wave pattern to actually program your brain, and then they can they can manipulate the sound coming out of the TV to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, I know myself sitting at a bar with a buddy. I find myself looking up at that TV. I don't even know the sports game that's on. I don't care about the sports game that's on, but my eyes just seem to drift towards it. It's a very hypnotic uh, situation. Well, obviously, sports is a whole other issue. I know so many True. people, are, they love their sports and whatnot, and I'm not going to call you bad names for being a football fan, but you, you got to remember they they're paying, the U.S. government is paying good money to those team owners in those to create those those uh stadiums oh it's all it's all bread and circus i mean come on people it's like it, it's such a waste of time it's filling your brains with crap and it's causing you to have a false us against them against your own fellow americans you good know? point good point yeah they should be bringing us together not not cr giving us these uh, animosities against each other over these bogus things yeah, I mean, how many drunken fights probably break out over the silliness of sports teams? You know, somebody wearing the wrong hat or saying your team sucks 
And, uh, oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Wear a Yankees hat in Boston to see what happens. (laughs) Right. It's pretty sad to see adults acting like that. And so much energy is lost. And the huge stadiums, they use taxpayer money to build these things, yet the taxpayers still have to pay to go to the show, pay outrageous prices for alcohol and merchandise, and it all just goes to private profits. I mean, it is a complete racket, the sports industry. I can't believe people respect it the way they do you know um when we're on the subject of polarizing people and and generating false hatred and all this stuff i i'm gonna i want to bring up something real quick that i think is important that it needs to uh, uh be reiterated and that is this uh shooting in san bernardino mm. uh, that took place first of all people I, i'm still seeing pundits and and idiots on tv or i'm not seeing on tv but i see people posting things all the time where uh they keep suggesting that two muslims committed the act no two muslims did not shoot anybody okay that that incident that false flag attack was done by three white men who probably worked for craft international who were probably professional mercenaries who went in there and shot that place up and drove off and these two muslims who may have been had all sorts of weird intent and, and evil plans, but the bottom line is they were patsies and they were used. They were just the same thing as Lee Harvey Oswald. And when these guys were in that uh, suburban or whatever it was that got shot up, that Escalade or whatever it was, they were in the back seat with handcuffs on. They were not driving that vehicle. Those cops shot up that vehicle, pulled them out of the car, threw them on the ground, and executed them on the ground Mm -hmm. they were they were cuffed already before they ever pulled them out of that car innocent until proven guilty right they were they were kept them in that car and it's and i'll tell you the fbi now says that after the shooting took place like 15 minutes passed before the alleged uh shooters were executed on the freeway well where were they during this time they were they were handcuffed in the back of the car, waiting for the signal to go ahead and send them into the the final shootout. Mm-hmm. So so stop blaming it on these Muslims. Muslims did not do it. That was that was a totally bogus false flag perpetrated on American soil by Americans. Right, just a couple of the latest in a long line of them. Just like Sandy Hook, just like Boston. You take your pick. They're all phony. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, police brutality was a huge issue in 2015, the last year. I mean, it's been an issue for a long time, but we definitely saw some spikes in it. What are your thoughts on what's going on there? Well, obviously, there is no war on police. There is a war on civilians. Civilian police deaths at the hands of civilians is an all time record low, while police while civilian deaths at the hands of police is an all time record high. And yet we have all time record high gun ownership. So. Violent crime is way down because we have record high gun ownership, and yet we have record numbers of law enforcement personnel executing citizens. Obviously, this is a major problem. I think that the police are completely out of control. I think that this is a this is being done and perpetrated for specific reasons because we have become a fascist police state, and I think that this is the natural progression of a capitalist society is it does have to, it has to become a fascist police state in order to maintain the uh, uh the inequality that that we're seeing so much of yeah i totally agree with you there that what we have now is just a natural progression of capitalism a lot of people try to give it a different name like crony capitalism so they can separate the two in their mind but i do think those people are just lying to themselves And all the problems with the false flags and the militarized police, it's just exacerbated by these slogans like Boston Strong and Black Lives Matter and Hands Up, Don't Shoot. A lot of people have a good intention, but when the media gets a hold of these little mottos, it makes the problem worse almost. It can be really polarizing. People get very emotional. Well, that's what the media is all about, of course. They're, they're, they're trying to polarize everybody, and that's what people need to reject. You need to uh, avoid any of this polarizing thing. And the way that you do that is you have to uh, separate your emotion from, from issues. You have to learn how to observe issues without becoming emotionally attached and becoming angry and allowing any issue or information to control your emotions. Mm-hmm. So not easy to do. Yeah, and the police thing is probably... One of the 
things that I think worries me the most. I drive a lot with my dog in the car. And so often you hear that these police just on a simple traffic stop will execute a dog that won't stop barking. And I know if a stranger walks up to my window, my dog is going to bark. And when I'm driving from here to St. Louis, which happens sometimes, that's the number one thing on my mind is just don't get a speeding ticket because it could escalate into you losing something you really value and there'll be no repercussions whatsoever. Well, you know, um, dogs are really good at uh, perceiving evil. <laughs> good know? point. And so, yeah, they, they're, when you're that evil, you're going to have fear of a dog. Right. And that's just that's kind of like a vampire. You know, they're going to they're going to have fear of these certain things. But no, I, I got to tell you, obviously, I was in the law enforcement business for a long time. Most of my my clientele were, were uh, police officers and, and government types. But uh, most of the police people who have become police today, they're uh, the ones, you know, by and large, the ones out there shooting these dogs. These guys are pussies. Hmm. You guys are pussies. You guys shoot a dog. You are a pussy. <laughs> you should not have a gun. You should not have that job. Seriously. Right. And I got to tell you, uh, a lot of these cops, they are bullies. <laughs> I mean, I've dealt with a lot of cops. I've noticed a few things I've noticed. Uh, one, very often, a lot of times, guys with these funny names, you know, they were picked on as children. They become cops. <laughs> I remember one of those guys name was Harry Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I can see why you became a cop. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like and they they do uh they do really get off on putting people into poverty. And it's uh it's really a problem, but for instance, um they they'll have rules and laws, of course, obviously you you've got to have a registration license, all this sort of thing and insurance. And if police officers out here, and I don't know, I'm sure it's every, it happens the same way everywhere, but if they see you driving a car, it's got, you know, Bondo, whatever primer on it, it's not a very nice car, it's a late model car, they're going to look at that thing and they go, huh, that car's worth less than $1,000, I'll bet you anything, he's got no insurance, because he obviously can't afford it. Right. So they'll, they'll pull the guy over, invariably there'll be no insurance, no whatever, no registration, they will impound the car, the car will get sold off and junked because they obviously can't afford to pay the thousands of dollars to get the car back. They're on their way to work. They're trying to survive. They're trying to feed their family. They, they're barely making it. Suddenly now they have no car. They can't get to work. And on top of that, they've got thousands of dollars in bills. They have put an entire family into utter poverty and they're happy about it. Yeah. You know, people are struggling to get by and struggling to survive and transport themselves back and forth to, to their career or their their job their meager job to make their meager earnings and these guys go out of their way these parasitical road pirate bastards go out of their ways to decimate families mm -hmm. and they get off on it so so yeah there's a there's a major problem in this country with with law enforcement and it is going to be a big part of what it brings about the end and I'm not sure if you saw the headline that was going around a little while ago about asset forfeitures and uh, the police seizing money from people, which has become a problem. But according to the FBI's own crime reports, last year, police took more money from people than burglars did. Forfeitures was just over five billion and uh, burglaries were just under four. Yeah, so it's it's uh, it's now proven beyond a beyond a doubt that the law enforcement are bigger thieves than the thieves. <laughs> it's yeah. true by a billion dollars, and it's kind of funny because I moved here to San Diego, and people would always talk about, oh, you can't go down to Tijuana, don't go down to Mexico because you know the cops will pull you over, and they're so corrupt, you know, they're gonna shake you down, and it definitely affected me. I, it scared me away from going down to Tijuana, but then I thought, why police here are not any better. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's pretty bad. But like you said, if you drive a late model car, you're a target, you know? Right. So, and another thing you brought up earlier was uh, training from Israel. That's something that they've instituted with the police as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll be seeing a lot of people getting shot and then they'll be dropping knives next to their bodies. <laughs> So what's the solution on the police front? More cameras, non-lethal weaponry? Well, this is the thing. Again, obviously, there is a uh, society as a whole needs to go through some major restructuring. 
but uh, from a uh, on a small level, policy is needs to be changed. So, in other words, if the police are doing something that's unacceptable, shooting people in the back, they're running away, things like this, and the the police officers are not being charged for this and they're getting away with it, then that means is that uh, policy is allowing them to do that. So policy needs to be changed. And policy is something that's developed on a local level within every single department. So so that is something that definitely uh, needs to be changed across the board. They need to adjust their policy. Mm-hmm. And then th- if they violate policy, then they can be charged. And of course, you know, I'm running for president and I wrote this in my po- my platform. But I believe that uh, police unions need to be abolished. I don't think there's a place for that. I think there are certain fields that should not be unionized, and that is definitely one of them. You you should not have police protective associations fighting tooth and nail to keep corrupt cops on the on the job. That's that's wrong. That has to stop. Right. Yeah, I did not realize you were running for president in 2016. Yeah, I'm running for president. Yes. Wow. How's that going? What party? Any in, in, totally independent? No, you got to write me in. Well, yes, totally independent, but you're going to have to write me in. I'm not going to. I'm not going to spend a million dollars to go out there and collect signatures and put my name on every ballot. You're, you're going to have to write it in. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but just you know, if you basically, if I was to say, what am I? What am I? Uh, things. What am I going to do? One thing I'll say real quick. I'm going to increase uh, personal wealth everybody across the board by nine thousand percent. I'm going to fix Fukushima. I'm going to make free energy and free communication. And let's see what else. Uh, oh, yeah. End world hunger. <laughs> <laughs> Increasing people's personal wealth. What do you think would be the biggest things that would do that? Ending the Federal Reserve. Amen. <laughs> That's the first step. Ending the Federal Reserve. Audit, audit. End it. Audit. Occupy it repatriate the gold and if there and i firmly believe that the united states that we don't have any gold i think it's all gone i think fort knox has been cleaned out uh, all the gold under the trade towers has been stolen whatever gold is supposed to be in the federal reserve is not there it's all in some vault underground probably in london <clears throat> wherever the rothschilds are keeping it so i would withdraw all our military from the middle east and all over these places and go to town on the rothschilds and bring our gold home <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. And we spent the first half of the show talking so much about the Clintons and how they clean up all their messes and anyone who's looking into their dirty deeds. Do you worry at all about that? No, they can't kill me. That's the thing. I've been actually told that they're not allowed to kill me. Oh, really? Yeah, I I belong to the Can't Be Killed Club. That's why I do what I do, because I'm trying to make them, force them to do something. Protected by that uh, hidden hand, huh? Uh... I don't know. I think there's some sort of bloodline thing going on. You know, I I only know this because they, from what they say, but, you know, maybe I got some sort of Bilderberg bloodline. I don't know what the hell, but but no, they're not allowed to kill me. Huh. And that's why I, I go out of my way to say crap because <laughs> they can't do anything about it. Fair. And who is, and, who and, is they in this context? Some agencies who've contacted you? The Bilderbergers. Bilderbergers themselves. Yeah, the kings of the earth. They're not allowed to touch me. They are not allowed. Believe it or not, this is going to sound really crazy, but believe it or not, the last time the Bilderbergers all got together in London, I think it was during a big solstice or something like that, uh, they actually, one of their topics of discussion was was what they were going to do about me. (laughs) Wow. Um, But, and where's, who's telling you this? Actually, Carrie Cassidy was the one that told me that. Oh, okay. Yeah, because she was actually there, and uh, but and it, it was actually uh, backed up by another individual who works for the NSA, who's actually based in uh, Alice Springs, you know, their, which is their big NSA listening post over there in uh, Australia. But yeah, so it's but this is when I was messing around with um, scalar technology. I'm a problem. I'm a problem. All right, this is why they. They, this is why I'm running for president. This is why I do what I do because I'm a problem and they know I'm a problem. And that's why they are doing everything they can to keep me quiet and keep everyone from knowing who I am because I'm going to screw things up for them. Mm-hmm. I think they're waiting for it. They've seen it. Their crystal balls have shown me upsetting their apple cart and they're doing everything they can to keep that from happening. <laughs> wow. Well, then it's a good thing we did this show and maybe you can get uh, Andy Basagio as a running mate. <laughs> No, uh, I'm anti and he's screw that guy. He's a clown. <laughs> he's a clown. I got a running mate anyway. Actually, no, I've 
my running mate is actually a uh, the one I've chosen. He's a former uh, bishop with a Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and he's former NAAC, NAACP. He's a good guy. Hmm. But no, Andy, Andy's a clown, all right? <laughs> Seriously, he's a clown. Yeah. I don't I don't have no patience for any clowns right now. <laughs> well, I hope the campaign goes well. Obviously, the agenda is certainly heating up. And also, as someone who lives in California, I mean, the environmental problems here between the radiation hitting the coast and the methane leak that might still be going off. I don't know. They don't really talk about it much. But are you going to have to move soon? Uh, we're already being irradiated. But um, one of the things that I try to teach people is how to change your energy so that you're not a, a victim of these things. So yes, that's magic. All right. We can we can adjust our, our bodies and we can actually give out gravity by becoming uh, service to others orientated. And that will allow you to actually defend yourself against these uh, harmful radiations as well as mind control and all that other nonsense that they do. Mm, and that is a whole nother interesting branch on the truth tree but that is pretty much the end of the show thanks so much for being here man before we go do you want to uh let people know where they can maybe follow up with you or at least tell them about your book and where they can hear the show uh google my name Stephen d kelly s-t-e-v-e-n-k-e-l-l-e-y Stephen d kelly google that everything will come up the name of the book is um cities under the plane is available on amazon google or no amazon kindle Oh, yeah. My email is law17, L-A-W-1-7-G-U-N at AOL.com if you want to communicate. Right on. Thanks again, man. Definitely info the people need to hear about. Much appreciated. Keep doing what you do out there, man. All right. Later on. All right, guys. There it was. The first hour, I think, had some solid info in it, and it was spent primarily on the Clintons, but the second hour definitely was not. A little more all over the map. And some of the parts were very informative. I liked hearing about the background of the Khazarian Empire and how some of the power centers flexed geographically. I always like to ask researchers about that because there are so many different opinions. We talked a bit about the elite and their underground bunkers, also important, and how control of ancient sites and new archaeological discoveries might be the real underlying reason for some of our military action. And I also really love getting into the hollow earth theory with anyone who's looked into it. And Stephen dropped some science in a new way that I really enjoyed. It's just that when I hear someone who's talking about practical stuff so well, and then they equate it all to Satan, and they're critical of homosexuality, and they say that they won't talk about the Vatican, I just have to think, oh, okay, you're one of those guys, and I have to filter out that residue of your allegiance to the church, which I think is a trap of the elite in itself. Or maybe you're a Christian, and when you listen to THC, you filter out my condemnations of religion, and that's fine too. That's why I let a guest have the floor as much as I can when they're here. And you can hear my thoughts afterwards if you care to. But I think we can still all enjoy a show like today's, right? Although when I hear Satan is the top of the conspiratorial pyramid, I have to substitute Archon or Wrathful, Demonic Entity, or something that really kind of means the same thing. But I have to take it out of that God versus Satan dynamic because I think that's very naive to think that that's what's going on or that the Bible is your rock or that Jesus is your savior. I'm not into that, but sometimes you have to hear about it to get to the good stuff. Because if I filtered out all religious guests, I'd be running out of people. And I am in the minority, I think, when it comes to the conspiracy community and my lack of good Christian values. But we seem to be doing all right. Which brings me actually to my next point. Another element of the Plus Show was when we got into the state of the alternative media. And Steve was not shy about naming names and topics he finds to be a waste of time and energy. And I respect the boldness, and I agree with some of those breakdowns. But one thing I noticed, and I've been dealing with more and more from listeners, is this assumption that a show automatically becomes disinformation or co-opted because it's reached a certain level of popularity. And people are saying these kind of things about me and the Higher Side Chats more and more. I'm sure those of you who are friends of mine on Facebook or Twitter have seen this, but they're forgetting a few crucial things. We've never had an era where a show of this nature could get 100,000 listeners without the approval of the gatekeepers because they control the radio airwaves and the TV, and any form of media you could consume had to be paid for by sponsors who all affect the information that gets to you as well. We've never had direct-to-consumer podcasts like this, so the rules are different. And it's a bit of a catch-22 to support a show, watch it grow, share it on social media, give it a good review, and then say... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I wanted you to do good, but not this good. <laughs> I mean, what am I doing this for? I want it to be successful. 
I want it to be so well known that when B.O.B. or Tila Tequila want to speak out about conspiratorial ideas they've come to believe, but their publicists and handlers are trying to put it all back in the box, I want them to know to get in touch with the Higher Side Chats. I want to build a stage and framework so large that when I stumble upon someone like Sylvia Ivanoa or John Hamer or Gordon White or so many other people that I think have done great work but haven't gotten the credit or attention I think they should, I want to know that when they're on my show... I've done the work to build something that's worth their time, something I can be proud of and feel good about, and something that helps them as much or more than it helps me. And maybe people forget sometimes what THC is about. Is it 100% truth all the time? No. How can it be? But do we get closer to truth by incorporating the disenfranchised voices that aren't heard in consensus reality? Fuck yeah, we do. Sometimes it's corruption, sometimes it's creatures from the inner earth, but I think this show can be entertaining, extreme, and come from a place of honest curiosity, and be professional sounding all at the same time. I'm giving you two unfiltered hours where I try to present the best case we can for a topic, or sometimes it's just interesting to get into the mind of some of these researchers for 120 minutes without commercial breaks. Sometimes it brings you to entertain ideas that you had previously dismissed, And sometimes you get to understand a position you didn't before, even if you don't agree. That's okay. Can we entertain a concept like Hattie Bob's Ebrov spider being invaders and file it under the maybe category and have a good time along the way? I don't see why not. I guess this is a conspiratainment show, but even that sounds a bit dismissive of the good information we can get into. I think it sort of defies genres. And you have to be an adult about crafting your framework of the world. I like to think I help people with that, but THC is a resource, not the answer in itself. But this idea of turning on something because it's risen past some arbitrary level of success that only exists in your mind, well, that's not any kind of way to be. Or for a host to say, well, my show isn't successful because it's the truth and the truth doesn't sell. That's bullshit. I would never try to intentionally deceive, but I do try to entertain. I try to take books and information that can sometimes be as dull as C-SPAN and package it up in the best way I can. A spoonful of sugar, right, people? And the overwhelming narrative in the messages I get from listeners is, thanks, this is exactly what I want in a show. Great job, very professional, always sounds good, and fucking A. That's a beautiful thing. Thanks for listening, people. But I think this problem of making excuses is a lot bigger in our conspiratorial underworld than we want to admit sometimes. And yes, we can look at a broken fiat currency driven economy and we can look at the tax dollars that go to fund the deaths of who the elite determined to be second class citizens around the world. And we can say, I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to work hard because the system is broken and I can't win. And we can lie to ourselves that successful people can't be good people, that voting doesn't do any good. And so we're going to have a stance of non-participation across the board. I think that's the archon of laziness making excuses for you. You can't get ahead because Rockefellers. Look, I get it. I don't have to list the problems of the world. We know them. The show is about a lot of them, and it's an uphill battle. But don't be defeated. I try to give people alternative information to give them a fair assessment of the chessboard so you can better navigate it successfully, not roll over and die. I get frustrated almost every day at some aspect of the machine, but I don't give up. How is that any better? I mean, I just found out what I owe in taxes in my first year as a semi-successful independent person, and Jesus, is it a lot. What I thought I was saving for my first house to maybe get started with a family is now in the negative, because you gotta pay to play. And of course I think there's a better system than capitalism, but what, should I just quit and live in a tent until everyone else gets on board with me? Or am I able to participate in a way that gives listeners a resource they didn't have before, gives out hundreds a month in the money bomb, helps researchers and authors who are struggling to get their ideas out in front of a large amount of people, provides a decent living for myself outside of the soulless 9 to 5 I was set up for, allows me to hire artists to make songs and t-shirt designers who are desperate to find some work, and a thousand other things because I worked hard. And when someone says, oh, add the higher side chats to the list of sellouts, sellouts to who? What are you even talking about? Stop hating and start participating. Nobody's going to make your dreams come true but you, So get educated on the situation, take a deep breath, and dive in. Life is for living. Don't let your ego make excuses for not being successful, and don't be a victim, right? I mean, I'm speaking broadly, but in the case of today's guest, we couldn't get through two hours without hearing cats and dogs and birds, and maybe that's an indication of something. 
I was very clear about doing a show focused on the Clinton family. Maybe brush up on that information instead of shooting from the hip. If you're the only truthful person in the alternative community, maybe take this opportunity a bit more seriously and come a bit more prepared. Again, I don't want to bash someone who was kind enough to be on my show. I want to put them in a positive light and not slam them when they aren't here to defend themselves. But this isn't just today's guest. And to be fair, it's not like he wrote three books on the Clintons and he's supposed to be some Clinton expert. But this does happen with a lot of guests. Sometimes I'm more familiar with their work than they are. Are they unsuccessful because the truth in their book is just too raw? Or do they need to take some writing classes and learn how to promote? I have people try to get on my show and say, well, now I know you're a shill because you won't touch my info. Or, or perhaps maybe your info isn't that good. Maybe you need to look around at what other people in your wheelhouse are doing and assess if your quality is truly up to standard. Of course there are conspiracies out there, but don't let them keep you from taking an honest look at yourself. It's something worth thinking about. And B.O.B., if you're listening, ignore the warnings from your publicists and marketers and sit down with me for two hours and let's talk weirdness. I'm sure you've seen some things that we would love to hear about. <laughs> but okay, well, that's probably it for me. Please sign up for Plus if you enjoy this resource and want to get the most out of it. I do appreciate all the listeners, and I want the best for you guys. Get out of the rat race and be your own person. Congrats to the dude who quit his job who left me the message. You can leave messages on the voicemail app on the right side of the website at thehiresidechats.com. Quit those jobs, people, but be prepared. That really is the only true freedom. And how appropriate to play us out today is another Lauren Silva song we worked on. I meant this to be just kind of all in good fun and tongue-in-cheek, but it does sound a little aggressive now that I just went on this big rant. But so be it. Shots fired, people. And I'll see you guys next week. I've done my part. Your move, Redneck Mafia. Your fucking move. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. We're going to talk about angels and miracles with Rosemary for a few hours tonight. Coast a.m. Day after Christmas. All the angels in the park. What Genesis did right. It's getting old. It isn't pleasing. I turn the station. I am done. Maybe it's not my department. Maybe I should shut my mouth But Mr. Jones is quite the harlot With all the ads he's reading now Working with my team, we set out to find the best for you But the it's fine Now that I have THC I'm feeling more at home than I ever have before. If the wars are just drowning slowly, coast to coast isn't going nowhere. All these shows are just drowning slowly. I'm sure you must feel kind of dirty after each commercial spot tuning in at certain hours on demand is what i want thc it's the show that i adore now i'm feeling more at home than I ever had before. Infowars are just drowning slowly. Coast to coast isn't going nowhere. All these shows are just drowning slowly. Infowars are just drowning slowly.